camminiamo distrattamente. Poi all'improvviso qualcosa ci attrae. Cosa ci ha colpiti? So you know when you're walking a little absent-mindedly and something attracts your attention? A sleek body, profile, and details that make your pulse race. Things unknown that conjure up ideas of power. Like these Mercedes-Benz AMG Vision Gran Turismo, driven by an AMG V8 577 horsepower engine and the cigarette ranging 50 Vision GT concept. Right, under this elegant yet aggressive exterior, what have we got hiding? How does one make a fast boat? I mean, really fast boat. The hull needs to be very solid. Just think of the impact of waves coming at 200 kilometers an hour. At that speed, they're like cement. The hull also needs to be very rigid, like the chassis on a car, as the deformation produced from the speed would cause energy loss. There is a basic physical principle to respect. The boat is so much faster when it's longer and thinner. This model is 15 meters long and just 242 centimeters wide. These are the steps, very necessary in racing a boat like this. But then you ask right away, where are you supposed to put them? What angle are they supposed to have? How high should they be? To answer these questions, you need to be up there technically and have a lot of intuition, along with a lot of practical research in the subject. What do you need from them? Well, let's not forget that water is a glue that we need to unstick the boat from at great speeds. The water doesn't even touch this bit. It's vaporized, mixed with the air, so the hydrodynamic resistance lessens. Let's go to the front. The sharp but deep V means it goes through the water better, but also reduces the pitch. And if the waves were any bigger, it would lift up higher and then let it fall into the dip, making it hit the water. The stern is up against another battle, making sure that the potential and the engine coupling are maximized. To start with, you need propulsion, which is able to resist performance. With thousands of horsepower, the gears at the stern drive would disintegrate quickly. You really need to have a special product here. And where's the right position for the propeller? Where does that need to go? How high up and with what slant? When the water doesn't find a boat in its way, it rises up and at a certain point becomes more compact and faster. And that's where you put the propeller. The turn of the propeller, i.e. the distance that it goes to complete a full turn, is fundamental for speed. If the rotation is too short, you don't go fast enough. If it's too long, the engine doesn't manage to get up to its full potential. There's only one way to do it. What is there between a propeller and the engine? Well, in a car, between the engine and the wheels, there's the gears. But a boat doesn't use gears. The choice, it's just one gear. And whether you plane or go full speed, and it's difficult finding the right one. It's also worth noting that a good performance is linked to how close the propellers are to each other. But because the engines are very wide here, you need to stagger them, i.e. put one in slightly behind the other. And then you need a lot of air in the machine room, not just to cool down these 1,650 horsepower engines, but to feed them too. Think of it like they are drinking thousands of litres of air every minute.
We've seen how complex it is to make a fast boat and that it's a completely different know-how from the one necessary to create a yacht. Here, there is a little sign of the carpenter and furnisher. The most important task is for the testers, who have a great job, if a little risky. And let's not forget how risky it is going fast. This cigarette 50, 3,300 horsepower, don't forget, can get up to 122 knots, which translates to 225 kilometers an hour. The equivalent of launching a car on the track at at least 400 kilometers an hour. Hey, if I had 1.5 million dollars, I'd buy it.